Liz Crosby here with another Yoga Flow. We'll be exploring headstand today, Shirshasana, which will help us to connect to crown chakra. This is a crown chakra pose, Sahasrara, which means thousand petaled lotus in Sanskrit. And we have obviously the corona going around, and that literally means crown. So let's do it. Let's get upside down and make the crown of the head our foundation. Actually set the crown onto the ground, and that will in turn allow us to send energy from our solar plexus, third chakra, up through the uppermost chakras to then purify and illuminate, reactivate the nadis in these sapphic gunas. These are the processing elements, namely throat chakra and brow chakra. So not only does headstand help us to connect to crown chakra, but it will also help us to strengthen Jalandhara Bandha, which is again, the union between throat chakra, brow chakra, the sapphic gunas. These these are crucial. If you don't have these guys working, uh, again, you can't really process the karmic degree that you are retrieving as you practice. So even though uh, it sounds a little bit counterintuitive, you want to work from the bottom and work your way up, it might actually be to your benefit to work from the top and then work your way back down. So I would highly recommend trying this, even if you consider yourself to be a beginner, just watch it and become acquainted with these spaces and maybe try a couple things. Of course, if you need to tuck and roll, make sure that there are no hard objects in the way. And I'll go over all of the, the safety measures that you can take to prevent any unnecessary compression to manifest in the cervical spine because this is clutch. The cervical spine is the residence of the Shuddha throat chakra. So again, this is this is the purification aspect of all of the work that we do. So don't put this off. This is considered to be the king of asana by Iyengar. He calls the headstand and shoulder stand the king and queen of asana. So these are big. These are really, really big, guys. Uh, I was going to put it off and do another beginner video today, and I guess this one will probably have to be considered more so intermediate because it does include inversions but I, I can't wait any longer. We've got to do this one. We've got to do it now. And maybe I'll dive into the second series of Shtanga variations of headstand in a future video. But for now, uh, we'll focus on headstand, mainly the traditional headstand and tripod headstand. So without further ado, we'll start lying down on our backs. Of course, we don't want to dump weight into our head. Not at all, right? Light as a feather, stiff as a board. Plug yourself up into a tight little ball. The stronger your central core gets, the more you're able to pull energy into your central axis so that you yourself are lighter and more aligned. Hug yourself up in tight and extend the arms and the legs as you inhale. Exhale to drop back in. Inhale to extend. Exhale, drop back in. Inhale to extend. Exhale, drop back in. Once more, inhale to extend. And exhale, drop back in. Soles the feet to the mat, hips distance apart. Press up, lift up, roll spine up, sweep arms up, flowing through your bridge pose. What I love about flowing through bridge, exhales to slowly lower, is it teaches your core how to articulate the spine. Inhales to lift you up. Exhale, slowly lower. Again, we're building an intelligent core. Inhales to lift you up. You'll still get the six pack abs. Exhale, slowly lower. Once more, press it up, lift up. Hands come behind the back. Interlace, draw shoulder blades together. Press your chest towards your chin. So, Jalandara Banga is imprinted here in bridge pose. This is also essential. If you're not engaging Jalandara Banga, you're jeopardizing the integrity of your cervical spine. Most of us are taught to tuck the chin or to keep the chin up a little bit in our culture. And you know, we actually want to tuck the chin. A slight tin, chin tuck goes a long way in protecting the intervertebral discs, those spongy guys in between the vertebrae. A couple more deep ujjayi breaths here. Jalandhara 
Gently releasing the interlace. Send the arms straight up, contracting shoulder blades, lift the heels up and slowly lower the spine down. So before we embrace the king, let's take a little gander at the queen, which way for the knees side to side to release in the lower back. All right, now wrap the elbows in towards the side bodies, extend the legs straight up, pressing straight down through the triceps, core engaged, press up, lift up, keep the gaze directly up. You can walk the hands down the back towards the shoulder blades. So notice you can continuously lengthen the back of the neck here. And this is of course why it's the queen because it, it enhances the feminine aspect of the Shuddha throat chakra. Flexibility, receptivity, openness. Now from here, you can actually see your legs. So let's try drawing the right knee in towards your chest. And then extend back up. Switch, left knee draws in. Extend back up. Maybe both knees draw in. And extend back up. Maybe right leg stays straight, lower. Toes up. Lift it back up. Left leg slowly lowers to toe tap. Lift back up. Now both feet lower at the same time. And lift. Beautiful. Lower it down for Halasana Plow. Interlace the fingers behind the back. Press the palms together. And press chest towards chin. So we're really activating Jolandara Banda before we even approach headstand so that we have a straight line, <laughs> no, no curvature of the cervical spine, gently releasing the interlace, and now slowly lower. Find that core engagement to articulate the spine, and this should feel quite delicious. Lowering one vertebra at a time down to the mat. Hands can come underneath your seat. Extend the legs forward, pressing down through the forearms and lift the chest up, let the head hang back. This is such a perfect flow too for what's happening right now around the world. All of this work is going to clear the upper half of the body, the respiratory system. Gently release that. And happy baby pose. Grab out your just the feet, rocking gently from side to side. Hug the knees in, start to take some rocks forward and back. Massaging the whole length of the spine. Again, as always, I love taking it into boat back of the shoulder stand. Maybe take a little bit of a hollow body rock. This is so clutch. The transference of energy through the midsection so you're not dumping anywhere along the spine. Inversions are core work. They're divine core. Rock it up, cross shins, plant palms, tabletop. Ground down through the palms and the shins. Inhale, so you melt the heart forward and up. Sit onto your chest. Exhale around the spine. Gaze and navel. Inhale, so fill the chest forward and up. Exhale to your out. Moving in and out of your cat cow shapes. When you're ready, Take it into your bear curves. Hip circle, shoulder circles. There it feels good in the spine. Beautiful. Puppy dog pose, knees back, hands forward, melt heart towards mat. Ribs set, sit pose up towards the ceiling, breathe into your thoracic spine. So we're gonna kind of excavate the upper half, the shoulder girdle, so that we're not unintentionally hunching in the shoulders as we navigate the headstand. We wanna find our alignment in the bone structure so that the energy is congruent in our standing still wave or asana posture. Now release the forearms down to the ground, roll the spine forward into your sphinx pose, hips to mat, elbows stacking on the shoulders, untucked toes broaden across the collarbones, drop right ear towards right shoulder, left channel through chest, left through left shoulder, breathing into the cervical spine. So we got the front of the core activated with our core work 
on our backs. Now that we're prone, let's get the back of the core activated. Back through the center. Hands out to cactus arms, lift up on the fingertips, spread the elbows wide, just a really quick circuit pose. Drop right shoulder gaze over the left. Inhale through center, exhaling a twist. Moving side to side. Breathe into the heart space. And what's beautiful about this work too is as you learn how to practice your inversions, you'll generate more heat, more tapas, to furthermore excavate and create ever more increasingly efficient structures with your body and space. Back through the center as you inhale. And exhale, slowly release the spine back down. Hands come behind the back, interlace. Press the palms together, massage, sacrum with knuckles. Reach the hands back behind. Straighten through both the arms. Spiral the inner thighs up towards the ceiling. And tuck the chin, reach off the crown. So feel this, how your shoulder blades are descending down the back here. This is exactly what we want. So often people hunch their shoulders in the inversions, especially in headstand. We want to imprint this. Keeping this engagement in the back of the core, release the interlace, hands slide underneath the shoulders. Add the strength of the arms, press up, lift up, wrap elbows and roll shoulders back, puff chest, broad across the collarbones, cobra pose. Beautiful, and then slowly lower the spine back down. Slide the arms forward, back into your sphinx. Tuck the toes, press down through big toe mats. Rise the hips up into your forearm plank. Now lift the space up in between the shoulder blades. From navel towards spine, kiss it in towards the heart space. Rise the hips up and back into your dolphin pose. So dolphin is actually the template posture for all of our inversions. It teaches proper rotation of humerus head, bone, and shoulder socket, external rotation of humerus head, bone, and shoulder socket. Continuous action here. Couple more deep breaths here. Walk the feet in as close as you can to the elbows. And melt the heart towards the thighs. So this posture is excellent for finding that straight line between humerus bone and the rest of the spine. All right. Now lowering the knees down to the mat, take a quick child's pose. And roll the spine up through the seated. Really briefly here. Again, this is so crucial. I see this so often in the yoga community when headstand is just tossed into a sequence without proper instruction. Again, we're taught in our culture to keep our chin up. And this cuts off John Darlanda, so you're not getting any third eye activation usually when you do this. But also, it can cause the back of the cervical spine to compress over time. So we want to tuck the chin and the very crown of the head comes to the mat when you tuck the chin. When the chin is lifted, then the brow comes to the mat and this again can compress the back of the neck. So really, really crucial, tuck the chin. Before we go, we're gonna start with the traditional. It's actually more structurally sound than tripod. You'll interlace the fingers, pinkies overlap. Wrap the elbows in so they're practically parallel. Some people say grab opposite elbows. I say parallel forearms. It feels weird at first and might feel a little claustrophobic, but try it out and, and get back to me. You're pressing down to the outermost region of your forearm um, so that you can harness the energy in isometrically. The hands come to the back of the head. So right when your head drops down on like a double black diamond ski slope, right? And the very crown of the head comes to the mat. So here we have our, our formation, seated upright. And again, so often I see people here with the elbows splayed out, wrap them in. Also, I see people hunch their shoulders. What will happen if you hunch your shoulders is you might tuck them all. So again, clear the area, make sure that there's no water bottles or blocks or hard surfaces, angular surfaces in the way. And then proceed. <laughs> The tuck roll is not that big of a deal. It's not. It's, it's it can kind of surprise you, but it's not going to cause any any harm, um, unless there's a water bottle in the way or something like that. So interlace. Wrap the elbows in. Very crown of the head comes to the mat. Tuck the toes. Here we go. You can watch first too if you like before you attempt. Walk the feet in. 
as close as you can. And, and eventually you walk in so close again, notice the gravitational pull, rooting of your running forces to the bones. I'm not even actually doing anything, I'm just shifting my bone structure in place. But you may not have that flexibility quite yet. If you don't have the flexibility quite yet, draw one heel up towards the seat, followed by the other, roll the hips up to stack. And now extend the legs. Let's try some of those leg durations we did in shoulder stand. So again, maybe a knee draws in. Root extend. I love this core work. Other knee draws in. Root extend. Kind of late leg lifts of Pilates. Now both knees draw in. Root extend. And you're, you're dancing like Shakti around the Shashuna channel, around the Shiva, Shiva Lingam, if you will. One leg can stay straight. Maybe toe tap. It's okay if you can't quite toe tap yet. These are like signals. They're faint at first, they will become stronger with time. Other leg lowers down. Left leg, toe tap, lift. Maybe both legs lower down, toe tap. Lift it back up again, kind of like a crane lift. And slowly lower it back down again into your child's pose. Again, it's okay if it's not quite as smooth uh, at first. I'll be completely honest, I did most of my work initially on my own. <laughs> And I was so frustrated. I had to put on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia to stay, stay positive. So if you need to put on a funny show and just kind of have at it. Also, I did all my work on a rugged floor. So that, uh, when I tucked and rolled, because there was a lot of tucking and rolling initially. Let's be completely honest. Um, stay humble, for it. To counterbalance briefly, we'll roll up on top of the crown of the head. Hands can come out to cactus arms. And then lift the head. Release cervical spine essentially. This is a rabbit's pose. You can also interlace the hands behind the back, but the hands look heavy. And gently release it back down again. Arms extend forward. Lift the hips, tuck the toes, rise the hips up for your downward facing dog pose and walk it out. Bending one knee and then the other, allow the hips to shift from side to side, bring into calves, hamstrings, and lower back. And now walk the hands back, coming into a forward fold at the back of the mat, allow for a little bend in the knees. Grab opposite elbows, shake the head, yes, shake the head, now releasing in your cervical spine. So I'm, I'm going to add a little bit of hand and foot uh, yoga in so that we can activate the nadis and our sensory awareness in the hands and the feet. So you inhale, lift up onto the fingertips. They've called, it, they've called this gecko hands, we've heard. But you're basically tinting the hands as you walk back out again into your downward facing dog pose. And this should activate all the little muscles in and around the digits. And get back up to down dog, spread the fingers wide, find your stereo. Ask about now lift the heels and then tiptoe. The feet all the way to the front of the mat. Tiptoe, tiptoe, tiptoe. Beautiful. Releasing the heels back down. Inhale as you feel the chest forward. Exhale the forward fold. Chair pose. So bending in the knees, squeeze the ankles and the knees together. Sweep both arms up. Tuck the tailbone, draw the floating ribs together, relax the shoulders. Shift weight into the big toe mounds. Now lift the heels up and slowly lower it down. Knees open wide, reach your arms straight through and gently take a seat. Float your feet. Again, light as a feather, stiff as a board. You learn to love core work because it will make you more efficient in your freestanding inversions. Maybe straighten through the legs. It's okay if they don't straighten today. Just gonna go on a little bit right. Inhales, you slowly lower. Exhales to lift. Inhales to lower. Exhales to lift. Inhales to lower. Exhales to lift. Lower and hold. Here for five, four, three, two, one. Take some rocks. Feet will come wide. Now reach your arms through. Mala, some squats. So this is why everybody wants to start with tripod. I had to start with traditional first because it is more structurally sound. And I'm actually going to use Vakasana as a precursor 
to prepare our body for tripod because we really want the arms to be engaging. They are a part of the foundation. If they're not engaging, if we're not using the arms and they're just kind of there as dead weight, then all of the energy dumps into the cervical spine, which we don't want. So we're gonna do a little bit of a Vakasana. If you need to set up without lowering from Vakasana to tripod, please do so because I don't want any kind of plumpage. Don't drop your head onto the floor, please. You are the whole universe, honor your body, ahimsa. So knees come high up and in towards the armpits. You may wait for this one or both feet up. Maybe try a little bit of a Vakasana push-up lower and lift, work towards straightening through those arms. Lower. Now, if you can lower so low that you can practically kiss your yoga mat, mwah, don't worry, it was sanitized before, then tap the chin, crown to ground, press up, lift it up into your tripod and stand. Fun stuff. Extend the legs straight up. Okay, so fun transition time. You can bring your butt back, feet forward, working a little bit of a figure seven here. And then as you kick your feet towards the back of the mat, pull the heart forward and press down through your palms. So you should end up in a four-limb staff. Again, watch first if, you're, if you don't know what I'm talking about so that you can actually see and then practice and replicate it. So it should look like this. Inhale into your Urdhva Mukha. Exhale, roll over the toes. Hips lift up and back. Adho Mukha Shanasana. Back into our down dog, right leg extends up and back as you inhale. Open out, bend knee, take some hip circles. Invite some snow wheel fluids in the right hip socket. Re-extend the right leg up and back as you inhale. Exhale, knee to nose, round the upper spine. Now see if you can hover the right foot before you set it down. And gently release the right foot in between the palms. Scissor thighs together, we're rising up into high crescent pose. A little bend in the left knee is fine. Keep those hips neutral. And now we'll rise. So we're going to do a little bit of prep work. I love tricking the body into the necessary stabilizer muscle engagements for handstand vinyasa because the handstand vinyasa is so fun. And again, it's a nice little bondage check. So from here, Again, manually rotate the humerus head bone in the shoulder socket using, let's use the right hand, rotate the left humerus head bone in the shoulder socket external, then internally rotate the forearm, plug the arm in, replicate the same on the right side. And you are essentially in a handstand, more of a stag formation, but nonetheless, you can even tuck the chin and practice your chin lock here because eventually we do want the chin lock in our higher planes for our balance of handstand mainly. Now shift weight forward, pinch the heart forward, press up, lift up, launch yourself forward, warrior three. Holding here, spiral it around back towards the ceiling, push out your heel and reach out the crown. Beautiful, hands come to mat, standing splits. And again, I want you to just try. It doesn't have to be a freestanding handstand in the middle of the room just yet. It can look literally like this. Hands plant, little hop, bend elbows, float back. All right, or maybe pressing down to the palms, push the floor away, kick towards yourself, plug through your head bone into hip socket as you hop. Connect the legs together at the top. Squeeze the legs together. Reach out through the balls of the feet. And when you're ready, maybe a spirit drop. I'm going to give you two options for handstand vinyasas here. So the spirit drop, I like to do one leg first. Bend the elbows. Gently, one, two, tap, inhale, urva. Exhale, roll over toes. Hips rise. Downward facing dog pose. Melt heart towards thighs, you extend the bones up towards the ceiling. As you inhale, left leg extends up and back. Open out, bend knee, take hip circles, ankle circles. Invite snowmobile fluid into the left hip socket. 
amazing. Beautiful, we extend the left leg, square off the hip. Exhale, knee to nose, round upper spine. Gently pause before you step through. See if you can hold, hover. Then release the left foot to the mat. So the thighs together. Inhale, rise, high crescent pose. Both arms sweep up. And again, little bend in that right knee is fine. Keep the hips neutral. We don't want to scrunch right in the lower spine. Sometimes when people straighten through that back leg before they have the quadricep and hamstring flexibility, the pelvic bowl tends to tilt forward, which can scratch the lower most discs. A little bend helps to keep the hips neutral, lower most discs stay safe. Now left hand can manually rotate the right humerus bone in the right shoulder socket. Now into the rotate the forearm, plug the arm in. Same on the left side, find that formation. Maybe gaze between the thumbs so you're replicating your inversion. Or eventually, chin locked in. Beautiful, pitch the heart forward. Press up, lift up, warrior three. We're gonna have space here. Push out through heel. Reach out the crown. Couple more deep breaths. And then I want you to try to hit the warrior three shape first before drawing the legs together. Hands come to the mat. Standing splits. So don't think legs together right away. Think warrior three. Go for the warrior three. Anchor in and then connect. Hands plants. Again, it can look literally like this. Little hop, bent elbows, vinyasa. Or take it up, hand standards, arms straight. Push the floor away as you hop kick towards yourself. And eventually, it's just a straight press. It's a spectrum. Notice the warrior three formation. Right leg stays anchored into the central axis, and then the left leg ascends to meet it. So I'm going to show you another one of my favorite variations of a handstand vinyasa. You can lower the legs down, toe tap the wrists, and then shoot back into your chaturanga. <laughs> Make sure those toes are tucked. Inhale, urva. And exhale. Adamukha Shtanasana. Beautiful work. Okay, walk the feet to the outer edges of the mat. Walk the hands back to the feet, bend deeply into the knees. Malasana squat, elbows inner thighs. Press the elbows into the inner thighs, open up this space. So Malasana is much more globular than a tuck. Most people wanna learn their tuck handstand right off the bat. I'm gonna advise, even though it looks kind of goofy, you kind of look like a frog leaping in midair. Trying the malasana at the top. Then you can go for the clap if you want. It's really fun. <laughs> it gives your mind something to focus on. But wait until you lock it in. Lock it into the central axis, then go for the clap. Before we get going, really quickly here, maybe extend the arms up. So we're doing the same exact posture, right side up, before we take it upside down. Nice, and then releasing the hands down. Walk the hands forward. Press up, lift up, down dog. Little cheat code. Initially, as you're first learning, shorten your dog. You might as well, just go super short. And then plug the right, you're going to have hip socks, if you plug the right foot off the mat, switch. Imprinting, descending the femur bone, switch. Left foot was just an inch. Plug it in, plug it in. All right, so now we're gonna do that with both feet at the same time. Arms stay straight, malasana at the top, got it? Lift heels, bend knees, gaze forward in between the thumbs. Exhale, step, lightly hop, make your way. Malasana, squat, maybe, make a clap. Make a clap, make a clap. How many claps can you get? And then slowly lower, maybe, a little toe tap. This is the best core. Gently. Meet me at the front of the mat. Inhale as you peel toes forward, finally arch. Exhale for full. Chair pose, bend your knees, both arms sweep. Prepare 
preparing for our next transition, hands to the heart center. Twist to the right, left elbow hooks over, right knee, press the palms together. Maybe extend the arms, open the wings. I know some of you want to try the arm balance, hold off. We're coming back to it. Just opening up the space first and foremost. Inhale back through the center, both arm rise. Exhale, hands through the right center, twist to the left. Right elbow hooks over left knee. Press the palms together. Draw sternum towards thumbs. Maybe extend the arms open the wings. Amazing. Couple more deep ujjayi breaths here. Inhale, rise. Both arms sweep. And exhale, release for a fold straight through both legs. All right. Walk the feet to the outer edges of the mat. Bend deeply into the knees. Malasana squat. Elbows in your thighs. A lot of squatting in this, in this episode. This is so fun. I absolutely love this stuff. I wanted to be an architect when I was a little kid, so this is kind of, I'm also a great dancer, so a couple childhood dreams came true when I realized that this is necessary for clearing the microcosm. So just do what you can. Again, feel free to uh, just watch for the first few times, and eventually when you build up enough central core strength, you will develop the self-confidence. It's really trippy. Because all of a sudden you will feel safe and secure in these, these variations transitions. So do the very best that you can if you're attempting. Make sure that you have a blanket and all hard objects out of the way. So here we go. <laughs> Knees come high, bend in towards the armpits, lean weight forward, lift one or both feet, back into back, then slowly lower, tuck chin, crown to ground. Press the shins into the upper arms, float the hips up. Try my headstand. Wrap those elbows in so that they don't flare out. Isometrically pull that energy up. Now bunch your legs up. Draw your heels towards your seat. Bend in the knees. Now let's go to the right side first. Maybe you're just working on twisting. That's why we did the twisted chair first to prepare. Now maybe you're setting the left femur bone on top of the right arm. Maybe press up, lift up. Parsha, Bakasana, side crow. Gently back to ground. Press up, lift up, back into your Shushasana. Again, if you want to get in a little leg lift, extend, then rebend. Knees over to the left. Set the right femur bone on top of the upper arm. Jolt there, bond it is engaged. Core is engaged. Press it up, lift it up. Side curl on the other side. Ooh, delicious. I just got a delicious pop. All right, and then gently set the crown down. Press it up, lift it up back into your tripod. We got one more. Feel free to take a break. And just watch, of course, those of you that are still going, knees high up and in towards the armpits. Hips back. Work that counterbalance. It is a weight system. Now, once you make the connection, press up, lift up, back into your Vakasana. Here we go, fun transition. Gaze is forward. Now shoot that head straight forward as you shoot the feet back, landing with bent elbows, forward and step. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction, yogis. You've got this. Vinyasa, inhale to Urdhva Mukha. Exhaling, Adha Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog Pose. Well done, that was not easy. Again, if you were just watching today, that's okay. Do what feels right in your body. Right leg extends up and back as you inhale. Exhale, knee to nose, round the upper spine, gently set the right foot between the palms. And inhale, rise, high crescent pose, both arms sweep up. Pressing down to the right foot, draw your left knee into your chest, root to rise. Come to stand. Just clearing some primary nadis, right hand to right hip, left piece and fingers and thumb, catch left big toe. Extend the left leg forward. Open the left leg out to the left, maybe go tree branch, gaze over the right shoulder. Deep or giant breaths. These are really prominent lines in our field. Back through the center, reach across, right hand catches outer edge of knee or outer edge of foot, reach your left hand back and twist from the navel as you twist. Notice how much activation and how well aligned your jaw and is 
back through the center. Extra credit for the expert alchemist. Interlace fingers around the left sole of the foot. Slowly lower, pistol squatters take it down. When you're ready, press it up, lift it up, root to rise up, back into your Uti Tasta. Pen Usasana. Beautiful, releasing the foot, hands to hip to grow branches here for five, four, three, two, one, through the back, warrior three. Gently bend the right knee, step it way back, high crescent. Arrive, heel to the right, foot to the right, left foot swings down 45. Hands come behind the back, interlace, grow out across the as you inhale. Exhale, two hips in park. Humble warrior. Should feel really good right about now. We've been cultivating tapas in the upper half, generating heat in the shoulder girdle. Let the hands weigh heavy back behind. Deep Ujjayi breaths. Grounding down to lift up, hold the spine up, hold arms, sweep up, warrior one. Open it out into your warrior two, adjust the stance, heel to arch alignment, relax the shoulders, reach down the fingertips. Flip the right palm and reverse your warrior, left hand fire calf, lengthen through the right side body. Breathe into the right side body. Amazing, inhale as you rise. Right elbow, right thigh, left arm extends or extended, side angle pose. Lengthen through the whole left side body. Left hand can reach back for the right thigh, half bind. Right hand to the instep of the right foot, there is a full bind. Again, honor your body, just go as far as feels comfortable. Full binders, if you'd like to, take flight. Left foot steps forward, press up, lift up, root to rise. Bird of paradise. Gazing at a single point of focus your joystick. Straight through standing and straight through lifted. Send in breath, send in your jai. Slowly lower birds. Take your time pressing down through the right foot. Shift weight forward into crown. Left leg extends back down. Half a minute on your way back. Super fun. Getting sacred geometric in here. Step it way back. Release the mind. Rise warrior two. Inhale, rise. Straight through that right leg as you rise. Hands to hips. Right foot points towards the side of the room. Inhale as you find length. Exhale, hinge from hips. Leave with heart forward. Fold it. So here's another fun entry into headstand. And again, feel free to skip it. If it's not in your wheelhouse just yet, visually take it in. Hands plant forward and in front of your head, your face. Crown can come to ground. And let's actually try another variation of headstand. Maybe, if you feel comfortable, extend the arms forward, straighten through the arms, palms facing up. Lift the shoulders up. Press down through the backs of the hands in your crown. Arms engaged, core engaged, jaw and bare bone, chin lock engaged, maybe float those feet up. Just for fun. If this brings joy, and then slowly lower, butt back, feet forward. Gently release those feet. Well done. You can hover at the bottom. And release the head. Take some circles to release the cervical spine. Walk the hands forward, wide legged, downward facing dog pose. Melt the heart like in puppy dog. Send in breath. Walk the hands back in. Draw the heels in towards your leg toes, point out, bend deeply into the knees. Hands come to the inner thighs and press the knees apart. Drop from shoulder gaze over the other serpent's pose in our fourth squat. Inhale through center and exhale to twist. And love inversions too because it's a really, really epic energy conductor. Law of thermodynamics, the heat is very evenly distributed as the energy is funneling straight through the spinal column, which is really, again, the central hubbub. Back through the center. Straighten through both of your legs, hands to hips. Left foot to a 45, right foot to the front of the room. Now hips are external again. Deepen in the right hip crease. Arms out to a T, reach out to the right fingertips, reach. Right hand to ankle, shin, floor, left arm extends up. Twist the spine open, gaze at the left fingertips, deep ujjayi breaths. 
All right. And we're just gonna hit all the main trajectories. Left hand comes down to the mat. Scoot the left foot forward to the left. Parjvottanasana, pyramid pose. Inhales, you find length. Exhale, forward fold. Just here briefly. Walk the hands over to the right. Left hand plants outer to the right foot. Use a block if you need it. Right hand to your sacrum. Roll the right shoulder back. Maintain the neutral hips. Roll the right shoulder back. Maybe right arm extends at the continuation of that line of energy. Gaze is at the right fingertips. Twisted triangle pose. Send in breath. Amazing. Both hands to mat. Now, if you need blocks, take them with you. We're going into warrior three. Knee weight forward into right foot, press up, lift up, launch yourself forward. Again, hands can come to blocks. If you don't have blocks, hands can come to mat. Roll the left hip to stack, left arm extends up. Ardha Chandrasana, all the main lines. Maybe bend left knee, reach back with the left hand for the left foot, kick foot into hands, cinch up the heart forward towards the front of the room, send in breath. Beautiful. Welcome the shakes. Welcome the quivers. Gently release. We extend the left leg back. Left hand to block or mat. Square off hips. Right arm extends. Parvrita Arna Chandrasana. Again, welcome the heat. Maybe bending in the left knee. Reach back with the right hand for the left foot. Chapasana. In your Parvrita Arna Chandrasana. Deep Ujjayi breaths. Gently release. Hands to mat, standing splits, we extend the left heel, breathe into the right hamstrings. So we are going to step it back for a little hip opening sequence. Maybe hands plant, those of you that want it, take it up, hand standers. Connect the legs together at the top. Squeeze legs together, reach out of the balls of the feet. Maybe right heel kicks towards right seat. And left leg extends for a little bit of a stag handstand. I find it much easier to start working the jaw there about a chin lock with the stag formation. So maybe start to pull the gaze through with your Nike swish. And it's optional, very, very optional. And then as slow as you can, lowering it down, right foot can toe tap the right wrist. And step left foot way back, left knee lowers. Four arms lower, ease into the hip stretch, not hips from side to side. All right, so lots of heat, and so the cardiovascular system evenly distributes that energy throughout. You also have the activation of the uppermost chakras, heart chakra from handstand, and of course, throat chakra, brow chakra from headstand, also crown chakra, right hand to right knee. So it's not just a pretty Instagram picture but it's also very, very useful for processing our karmic debris with multi-dimensional analysis. Because why not? Bending in the left knee, reach back with right hand to the left foot, press heel towards seat. Gently release. Walk right foot back through midline. Straight through right leg, half splits, full splits. Side forward, walk back. Again, feel free to use blocks underneath the hands. Keep your mula bandha engaged. Protect your pelvic floor muscles. Deep Ujjayi breaths. All right, rebending in the right knee. Walk the right foot behind your left wrist. Release the right knee behind the right wrist. Half pigeon pose. You can draw right heel back as far as needed to protect those muscles, make it comfortable. Again, find your engagement. Maybe float the arms up to find that engagement first. And then forward fold it, walking the hands forward, elbows out to the sides, release, relax, enjoy. All right. Those of you that would like to, you can stay in half pigeon. Otherwise, maybe lift it up, walk the hands in, bend left knee, reach back with the left hand for the left foot, press heel towards seat, hip flexor stretch, quad stretch, optional. Slide foot into elbow crease, reach back with right hand for left fingertips. Mermaid, you gotta maintain the neutral hips, overhead grip if it's a part of your practice. Delicious. 
Gently release. Everyone walk the hands in, tuck the back toes. Engage your left thigh. Lift the left knee, slide right leg to the left, and set the right hip down. Legs stay active. Walk the hands over to the right. Left forearm lowers and gently twist. Bringing the spine out of toxins. Deep Ujjayi breaths. Amazing. Back through the center. Hands plant the foot in front of your right hip. Press up, lift up for a variation of plank. Left foot swings down to 45. Left arm extends. Roll your left shoulder back, fall in triangle pose. Maybe if you'd like to, you can actually gather your core. Slide right foot towards you. See if you can float the right foot up. Left hand catches the outer edge. Reach it forward towards front of the room. Gently release, re bend right knee, left hand plant, sweep right leg up and back. Hip circles, ankle circles. Rotate onto outer edge, left leg and lighten your right hand, push the floor away. Lift the hips up. You can take a floating tree. Maybe right foot steps back behind you for wild thing. And again, notice how much more accessible the upper body is. Now that we've been heating it up, roll it back into downward facing dog pose with the right leg extended, Agdapad Adhanoka. Walk the hands in a little bit. All right, and again, since we've been heating things up, headstand does heat up the cervical spine. We've done the forward fold already. We might double back and get in the side bends, but here is a back bend, if you'd like it. Bending in the elbows, give yourself a little landing strip, set the chin down, float it up. Chin stand, maybe feet to head, brush your hair with your toes. Vinyasa. Feel free to skip that. Please skip it if it feels daunting to you. Exhale, roll over toes. Hips rise up and back. Downward facing dogs. We got two legs, yogis. Left leg extends up and back as you inhale. Push out through the heel. Exhale, knee to nose, round and upper spine. Come forward into plank pose. Hover the foot as you gently set it down between the palms. Inhale as you rise. High crescent pose. Both arms sweep up. Little bend and right knee spine. Keep the hips neutral. All right, here we go. Pressing down to that left foot. Draw your right knee into your chest, root to rise, come to stand. Left hand to left hand, right peace sign, fingers and thumb, catch right big toe. Extend the right leg forward, Utita Asta, Padagustasana. Open the right leg out to the right. Maybe grudge free branch, gaze over left shoulder. Send the breath in, we're clearing space. Boost that immunity back through the center. Reach across, left hand catches outer edge of knee. Or outer edge of foot. Reach your right hand back. Twist. Imprint those deep core muscles surrounding the vertebral column. Back through the center. Interlace fingers around right sole of the foot. Slowly lower pistol squatters. Take it down. This is really tricky. Feel free to skip it again. If it's a little bit out of your realm, gradually we evolve. We build strength. We build flexibility. And we start to fine tune our balance. Our awareness. Press up, lift up, root to rise. Well done, yogis. Releasing the foot. Hands to hips or go branches. Again, here for five, four, three, two, one. Sweep it back, warrior three. Gently bending in the left knee. Right foot steps way back. High crescent. Heel to left foot to the left. Right foot swings down to a 45. Straight through that back leg, drive right foot forward as you drive left hip back. Gaze up and lift your heart up. Hands come behind the back. Optimal top, awkward interlace. Inhale as you find length through the spine. Exhale, hips from hips, leave the heart. Humble. As the shoulder passes left knee, then begin to round lengthen the whole spine. Up and out of the pelvic bowl. And breathe into your lower back. Deep Ujjayi breaths, Yogi, send it in. Grounding down to lift up. 
Roll the spine up, both arms sweep up, warrior one. And open it out, warrior two. Just stand, tilt to arch. Relax the shoulders. Then notice how much more activation we have in the upper half. You might even start to get visions and see with the breath as you hold this space. Flip the left palm and reverse your warrior right into the better calf. Right, a moving meditation. Inhale as you rise, left elbow, left thigh, right arm extends forward. Extended side angle. Stay here if you'd like, or right hand reaches back. Catch left thigh. Left hand to instep the left foot. There is a full bind. Full binders, take flight. Right foot steps forward, press up, lift up. Root to rise. Bird of paradise. Amazing. Send that breath in. So you know you were there. Illuminate the space. The physical body gets us there, but the oxygenated blood flow reactivates. Slowly lower, birds. Pressing down to the left foot. Shift weight forward into crown. Counterbalance the right foot as you send it back. Bound half moon goes on your way back. Deep breaths. And step it way back. Release the back. Rise. Warrior two. Straighten through that left leg as you rise. Hands come to hips. Left foot points towards side of the room. Inhale as you find it. Exhale, hands from hips, lay with heart. Get to play a little bit more with headstand again. It is a headstand flow, so we're having fun with headstand. Take it, either tripod or traditional for this one. We'll again have another series, another episode where we dive deeper into second series of Shtanga headstand variations. But for now, take it up, float those feet up. I'm gonna go with tripod. I'm going to show you a couple fun core work exercises that you can do from your headstand. So you can draw your knees high up and towards the armpits, like you're going to go into crow. Then rise and do a little tiny scorpion tail. And then lower. So we're basically using our legs and our pelvic bowl as a weight system. And lift, little scorpion. Feel all those muscles engaging? I am obsessed with creating strength around the lower back. Used to have lower back pain, no more. So again, functional core, actually utilizing your central core strength to maneuver the bone structure in space. Isn't that great core work? Oh, it's fantastic. All right, now center out and then seaweed legs. So one knee will come down towards the ground, straighten, and then switch. One knee comes down towards the ground, straighten, and switch. So this is starting to get the sides of the core. So notice how you're tilting the pelvic bowl from side to side. Again, you can just witness, take it in. If you're interested in just seeing what it looks like first, don't worry about actually attempting just yet. This stuff is tricky. All right, and we've spent quite a long time, so when you're ready, legs come out wide, hover the feet, and gently release. Nod the head from side to side, and again, you will build up resilience, those muscles will get stronger with time. They're really small, little tiny muscles around the cervical spine, so be patient. You don't have to be like Iyengar, lie on yoga and do five to ten minute headstands right off the bat. Take your time, build up that, that muscle strength. Walking the hands forward, melt the heart, extend the sickles up towards the ceiling, wide legged downward facing, puppy dog the upper spine. Amazing, then walk those hands back in, heels in towards midline, toes point out, bend deeply into knees, hands to inner thighs, press the knees apart. Drop one shoulder, gaze over the other. Inhale through center, exhale twist. Moving from side to side. Pause your feel good stretching sensation. Deep Ujjayi breath. Send it in. Amazing, beautiful work. Back through the center and straighten through those legs. Hands to hips. Right foot to a 45. Left foot to the front of the room. Hips are slightly external. Arms out to a T. Deep in the left hip crease. Reach off of the left fingertips. Core stays engaged. As you allow the left hand to descend down to the ankle, the shin, the floor, right arm extends up, 
wrap left sit bone underneath you, roll the right shoulder back, lengthen through both side bodies as you twist, gaze at the right fingertips. Again, heart will follow the gaze. Exhale, the right hand comes down to the mat. Hopefully you're starting to feel like the Sri Yantra with the flower of life. Right foot scoots forward to the right. Inhale, find length, exhale, forward fold. So I just say alignment is the key to divinity. We're learning to hold space in all these shapes. Walk the hands to the left. Right hand plants out into the left foot. Use a block if you need it. Bring the energy of the earth up to you. Left hand to your sacrum. Level off those hips. Find a neutral pelvic bowl, roll the left shoulder back. Left arm can extend up and twist firm navel as you twist, gaze is at the left fingertips. Again, we're going to take all these shapes onto one foot. We already actually did all these shapes on one foot. So we're kind of just carving out even more space before we venture into the half moons. Gently release, both hands come to mat. Shift way forward to the left foot. Press up, lift up, supporting warrior three. Blocks again if you need. Roll the right hip to stack. Right arm extends up, half moon pose. Maybe bend the right knee. Reach back with the right hand for the right foot. Kick the foot into the hand. Slingshot the heart forward. Send in breath. And again, these poses never get old because every time you revisit, as long as you practice diligently, you will be excavating new space. And that comes with it new information. The body speaks to us. Gently release, we extend the right leg back, square off the hips, right hand to mat, left arm extends up and twist. For navel as you twist, maybe bend the right knee, reach back with the left hand for the right foot, kick the foot into the hand, Pravrita Ardha Chandrasana with Chapasana. Send in breath, again just finding that edge of blissful consciousness expansion. Gently release, both hands to mat, standing splits. And again, you can just step the right foot back if you'd like, or handstanders, take it up, hands plant, middle fingers in line, thumbs in line, spread fingers wide, press firmly through the index finger and thumb knuckles, inner triad, spiral the eyes, nails toward each other, plug your arms into shoulder sockets, push the floor away. Maybe you don't even need a hop, but if you hop, kick towards yourself, plug the femur head bone in. Warrior three, initially to start, Find that line, anchor it in. Connect the legs together at the top. Flex point or you can point. Bending the left knee. Heel towards the seat. Right leg extends back. Coming into a stag handstand. Oh, let me hang from here. I'm gonna bend knee for my stag because I'm running out of wall space. Or actually, I have too much wall space. And then maybe Work that chin lock. Pull the knees up. So I'm just starting to show you again how you can add the chin lock into your other inversions. Then slowly lower, left foot and toe tap, left wrist. Right foot steps way back. Well done. Walk the left foot to the left. Right knee lowers, forearms lower, ease into the hips, stretch and not the hips from side to side. Send in breath. Left hand to left knee, gaze over the left shoulder. Gaze is over the left shoulder, bend right knee, reach back with the left hand for your right foot. Kick the foot towards your seat. Deep Ujjayi breaths. I love how hot inversions get you. There's actually a hashtag, inversions make you hot, and it's so true. Internally, they develop so much internal body heat to work with. Lift it back up. Walk the left foot back from the midline and straighten through your left leg half splits, full splits. I actually find myself overheating sometimes when I work in a heated studio. If I, and I, I really feel like I do, I, I feel so inclined to add inversions because they do activate third eye. They do help you to see with vivid clarity. So they are very, very powerful tools to have in your tool bag as a alchemist as a gunatita, someone that's rearranging their gunas for the benefit of all beings. A couple more deep ujjayi breaths here. And then when you're ready, rebending the left knee, walk the left foot behind the right wrist, release the left knee behind the left wrist, half pigeon pose. 
Find your shape. Inhale, find length. Exhale, forward fold. Enjoy. Couple more deep ujjayi breaths here. It was kind of like there's this gentle hum. Once you've created that strength, the energy just keeps flowing through. It's, it's really miraculous how that works. So all this work that you do, it builds upon itself. It really does. The bandhas will begin to get synchronized and conduct energy uh, long-standing. So that's why I always tell people, don't worry about the third eye activation. It's not going to be like taking DMT. Right? You're not going to be completely teleported to another dimension right away, right off the bat. It's this slow uh, build of energy conduction, and then eventually that energy conduction is, is happening with more regularity and consistency. And it's a little bit spotty at first. So initially, when you're first learning how to connect, you might get little, little visions, little snippets here and there. And then as you start to build that connection and it grows stronger, you might get through the activation pretty much throughout your entire practice, which is really, really fun. And again, it gives you motivation to do core work, start to walk the hands back in. I like to joke, maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's dimethyltryptamine, <laughs> <laughs> which we're all born with it. So it is your divine birthright. Bend the right knee, reach back with the right hand for the right foot, press heel towards seat. And then maybe, Mermaid, merman, slide foot into elbow crease, reach back, fingertips. Option two, overhead grip. You're building up that heat, and it's welcoming in. You begin to receive the invitations as they're given. Gently release, hands to mat, tuck the back toes, engage the right thigh, lift the right knee. Slide left leg to the right, set the left hip down, walk the hands to the left, right forearm lowers, and gently twist. Bringing the spine out of toxins. Deep Ujjayi breaths. The breath is the catalyst. It goes in and it picks up that stagnation, takes it back to the lungs for processing, witnessing, and releasing. Back through the center, hands plant. Foot in front of left hip. Press up, lift up. Variation of plank. Right foot swings down, 45. Right arm extends forward. Roll right shoulder back, fall in triangle pose. Maybe optional, float the left leg up. Right hand can catch the outer edge. Reach it forward towards front of the room. Beautiful, gently release. Rebend left knee, right hand plant. Sweep left leg up and back. Maybe rotate onto the outer edge of the right foot. Get light in the left hand. Push the floor away again. Almost the whole bottom of the right foot can come to the mat. Float a tree. Left foot can step back behind. Press down through both feet. Lift the hips up wildly. Roll it back into your Akapod Adamukha, one leg extended and down dog. Walk the hands back in a little bit. And then again, maybe your work today is just a little bend and straighten, and then you can take a one-legged vinyasa, or maybe instead of just the down dog push-up, you actually set down and take it up. Brush the hair with the toes. Vinyasa. Inhale, Arva. And exhale, Adho Mukha Shanasana. Well done, yogis. And again, jumping through <laughs> to seated. This is, it's, it, hopefully it's, it's fun. And if it's not fun, feel free to just hop to the front of the mat and then cross the legs, set, set down. Otherwise, handstanders, take it up. Arms stay straight, push the floor away. Lift the heels, bend the knees, gaze forward in between the thumbs. Exhale, step lightly, hop, make your way. Maybe try straight legs this time. Foot back, feet forward, figure seven. All the way through to seated. So again, 
making your way into a comfortable seat, whatever that means to you. A couple seated postures just to finish out this sequence. Draw the right knee in. Right leg comes up and over the left leg. You can lean onto the left seat, slide the left heel back towards the outer right hip. Right hand behind the sacrum, left arm extends. Exhale, left elbow, outer edge of right knee from navel as you twist. Gaze is over the right shoulder. So here we are. I'm going to give you an opportunity to take a little side bend for the cervical spine. And feel free to skip. If this looks daunting to you, skip it. If it's daunting, if it creates that emotion in you, just witness it for the time being. But if you feel the sense of confidence within yourself to actually endeavor to make this shape with your body in space, then feel free to navigate. Lifting up onto the left shin, hands plant, make a shelf with your arms, lean weight into your main foundation, float the feet, maybe straight through the legs, at Kwadakun, and gently set the side of the face down. Bend in that right knee, left leg extends straight up. So glorious, especially if you did those chin balances earlier. We're giving throat chakra a massive makeover. And then slowly lower. Back the same way you came. Rebend those knees. And set back down. Oh, all right. Counter twist to the left. Forward fold if you'd like. Back through to center and stack those knees. Heels towards outer hip. Half go across the spine, especially if the left leg is still straight or simple cross-legged position. Right arm extends up, bend elbow, reach left hand up back for fingertips. Inhale as you find leg and exhale to forward fold it. Deep breaths, send it in yogis. We're almost through to the end. Rolling the spine back up through the seated and release the arms. Shake them out, shake them out, shake them out. Hands come back behind. Straighten the legs out in front. Bounce the knees. Windshield wiper the feet. Draw your left knee in. Left leg comes up and over the right leg. Again, right leg can stay straight. Otherwise, move onto the right seat. Slide the right heel back towards your outer left hip. Left hand behind the sacrum. Right arm extends up. Exhale, right elbow, outer edge of left knee, firm navel, and as you twist. Bringing the spine out of toxins, deep ujjayi breaths. Now maybe just visually witness or attempt. Make sure that all of your surrounding is clear, hard surfaces or angular surfaces. Lifting up onto the right shin, hands can plant, make a shelf with your arms. And again, eventually I'll demo on the side. You don't need this left elbow. So maybe you're just using the right elbow here. Straighten through the legs. Gently set the side of the face down. Bend in that left knee. Redirect both feet to point straight up towards the ceiling. Shoot energetically out of the right foot. And this is kind of your rudder, right? This is how you can navigate deeper using the legs as a gentle weight system to deepen the opening in the cervical spine. Lateral bend and gently release it back down. Rebend the knees. It's collapsible. And then counter twist to your right. Forward fold if you'd like. Back through the center. Stack those knees. Heels towards outer hips. Left arm extends. Bend the elbow. Reach your right hand up back for fingertips. Inhale to find length through the spine. And exhale to forward fold it. Beautiful. Roll the spine back up through the seated. Release the arms. Shake them out. Hands behind. Legs out front. Bounce knees. Wish away for the feet. Slide flush the bum out from underneath. Ground down through your seat, both arms sweep up. Exhale to forward fold, Paschimottanasana. Roll the spine back up through the seat, draw your knees in, soles the feet together, knees out wide, scoot hips towards heels. 
Hands underneath feet. Inhale as you find length through the spine. Exhale, forward fold. Press elbows into inner thighs. Body home. And then rolling the spine back up through the seated. And since it's a favorite, legs come wide really briefly. Upavishta. Walk the hands forward. If it's a part of your practice, feel free to lift it up into your middle. This one's so crucial. And if you are obsessed with inversions like me, you're going to want to incorporate your middle splits more and more often. So those of you lifting up, honor by tuning in with the breath. Press up, lift up into the middle. A couple more deep breaths. And press up, lift up, back into your Upavishta, wide legged forward fold. Walk the hands over to the right, right arm and seam, right leg, sweep left arm overhead, side body stretch. Back through the center, over to the left, left arm in seam, left leg, sweep right arm overhead, side body stretch. Back through the center, walk the hands back in, hands underneath the thighs, slide the feet back in, draw the knees together. And roll down onto your back. Slow roll. Four stays engaged. Articulate the spine one vertebra at a time. And release. So if you're complete and that practice was sufficient enough, maybe just take another bridge pose. I'll offer a variation in bridge. It's kind of fun. Press up, lift up. Hands can come behind the back, interlace the fingers, traditional bridge. Or if you don't have any block, and we're going, well, this is kind of our, our quarantine series, so I'm assuming no one has props, you can bend the elbows and bring your hands underneath your sacrum to replace the block. This is kind of nice. I love this variation. Those of you that want to take it still deeper, hands alongside ears, and then replicating our headstand. Press the lift up, pause on the crown of the head. This is why I love pausing here, because it activates gel and Bandha. It activates all the muscles surrounding the vertebral column. Then walk the hands in a little bit more, wrap the elbows in, press up, lift up. Full Urdhva Dhanurasana. And then maybe extend the leg. And switch. And maybe if it's a part of your practice, we'll do another, another episode on this as well. Come up in the stand. Lower back down. Tuck the chin, back of the head to the mat. Slowly release it down, and show up the knees. Whoo! Great practice. I hope you excavated some new space. Hug the right hand, extend the left leg out. Scoot the hips to the right, roll the right hand over to the left. Supine twist, roll the right shoulder down, gaze over the right shoulder. Again, feel free to pause on any of these shapes if extra reactivation is calling in. Back through the center. Hug the right knee in. Extend the right leg out, hug left knee in. Scoot hips to the left, draw left knee over to the right. Supine twist. Gotta love the supine twist. If you want to thrive in your back bending practice, gotta love your spine. Massage those spongy discs. Give them the love that they deserve. Back through the center, hug the left knee in. Hug the right knee in, and one more revisitation of shoulder stand. Press up, lift up. Just like the cherry on top. A little before and after. Lower the feet down. Maybe interlace. Maybe bending in the knees. Karnapadasana. Ear sweeps. And gently releasing interlace. Slow roll the spine down one vertebra at a time. Sit bones will lower very last. Hands can come underneath the seat. Legs extend up. One more Matsyasana to counterbalance. The counterbalance.
runs for the counter runs. Especially if you didn't shake chin balance, definitely get in the Matsyasana fish pose. And then gently release, slight force of the bum out from underneath. Palms face up, feet flop open. Take a block of space, close the eyes. And let yourself just melt into the floor. Feel all of the energy that you dislodged throughout the practice. Steadily make its way out and rest here as long as it takes for that energy to evacuate out your fingertips, toe tips, out your crown. And feel a warm, glowing light of energy fill in that space to take its place. And the highest light within me truly sees and honors. The highest light within each of you. 